And here we are in the former trial part of the second day. And I have alcohol by my side. Well, technically it's cola with a bit of rum in it because... God damn it, if the witness is going to drink on the stand and this, I have to deal with this shit, I gotta drink as myself. Plus, no, it's not too early for this. It's past 12. Past noon, so really, yeah. Not too early. So, what do you think, Mr. Wright? I think the prosecution is as confused as we are. After all, the victim was murdered in two different places at the same time. And a different suspect was arrested at the other crime scene. Lana! Good morning, Mr. Wright. I apologize for yesterday. I was... indisposed. I hope they didn't hold you too long for questioning. We just finished, actually. I'm used to all-nighters, though. So, how'd it go? It's as Mr. Wright suspects. The police are clueless. When are they ever not? I figured as much, so I struck a plea bargain. A plea bargain? What do you mean by that? We agreed that if I told them the truth behind this simultaneous murder, they wouldn't see capital punishment. That's what I mean, Emma. But Lana! Don't tell me! Much to my regret. I'm as much in the dark about this as they are. So... You're the one who said, Hey guys, if I tell them the truth, you're not gonna kill me for my confession. Well, sure, we'll do that. Psych! I don't know anything myself! Seriously, that you only strike a plea bargain if you win something out of it and have something to offer. It has to all come from you. So really, this conversation part is kind of dumb. Miss Guy? Mm -hmm. We discovered traces left by a certain person in the police department's evidence room. They belong to Officer Jake Marshall. You found Officer Marshall's traces? Yeah, uh, fingerprints only. That's the only stuff we found. Maybe there's more, but that's the only thing we actually found. And actually, we're looking for bloodstained fingerprints, to be exact. That's the trump card I have up my sleeve today. You do understand what this means, don't you? In order to defend my sister, you're going to accuse Mr. Marshall? Oh, don't act like it's anything big. It happens all the time. We have to play the cards we're dealt. Isn't that right, Miss Guy? Do what you have to do, Mr. Wright. Somehow I have a feeling February 24th is important. From something else, not this game. Kurt is now in session for the trail of his Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution. Hmph. <laughs> Hmph. I'm afraid you'll have to clarify. It takes 30 minutes by car to reach criminal affairs from the prosecutor's office. The victim, Bruce Goodman, was slain at both places at the same time. I almost read that as stain. But that's not physically possible, is it? What's more, I heard the victim from the evidence room just disappeared. Yes, and the body eventually reappeared in the trunk of the statue with his car. Wow. This is one messed up trial. Oh, it'll get worse. One of my duties as prosecutor is to present impartial evidence. Today I will present evidence relating for the murder at the police department. Okay. In so doing, I believe the way in which we should proceed will reveal itself. Now that's what sets Mr. Edwards apart! He sounds so on top of things! Well, he was on top of Phoenix last night, so yes. Even though he doesn't know what's going on himself! And that's supposed to be an admirable trait? Yes, Phoenix! Being able to have a good poker face is very important. Then again, I'm not sure if you can learn that in the next seven years. Very well, let the trial resume. Shouldn't it actually start? On the day of the crime, what exactly transpired at the police department? Mr. Edwards, you may call your first witness of the day to the stand.
for its first witness, the prosecution calls the suspect of the murder that occurred at the police department. The suspect? You mean the so-called murderer? Oh boy. Things are getting wild from the get-go, and that's how we like it. Oh, fuck you, Edgeworth, for calling this asshole. Will the witness please state his name and occupation? Yes, sir! I'm Officer Mike Beacon, sir! My occupation is a dead would-be murderer, sir! Yes, I probably changed his voice, but by god, I don't want to ruin my own. A uh, yeah. So you're telling us you're a professional killer? Sir! It was me, sir! I'm the one who did it! I'll never kill anyone again, sir! You've got to believe me, sir! Hey, actually, what we'd like to hear from you... Sir! I'm what you would call one of the younger generation, sir! A person whose actions and adults can't possibly comprehend! Please, Mr. Edward, sir! Help me, sir! That sir should be in capital letters. Officer Meekins. Yes, sir! Give us your report of the crime. Consider that in order. Yes, sir! As you wish! After all, I'm part of the generation that must be told what to do, sir! You can't fault for a lack of enthusiasm. <sighs> Although it's not my normal duty, sir, I was assigned to guard the evidence room that day! I spotted a suspicious man on the security screen and rushed into the room! I was only doing what I was trained to do, sir! I was suddenly attacked! I fought for my life, and I... I did it! After that, I passed out, until another officer smacked me awake! Um, so the victim, Detective Goodman, attacked you? Do unto others before they do unto you! That's the Beacon's family motto, sir! I see. Then you fainted and a colleague helped you regain consciousness. I'm sure that was not their intended result when smacking him. Yes, sir! He knocked me upside the head, sir! My point is proven. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. What I need here is more info to work with. No, what needs to happen is that we shoot Officer Meekins off the witness stand and ignore this entire thing, because it's dumb. Mr. Meekins, you work in the General Affairs Department, do you not? Yes, sir! I am in charge of hiring new recruits, sir! Yeah. Now there's a scary thought. Evidence transferal was taking place on the day of the crime, which meant many officers were given special tasks not ordinarily performed. I was in charge of guarding the Blue Badger, sir! The Blue Badger? Yes, sir! The lovely police mask created by the head detective, sir! <sighs> that music... I was to ensure it was broke during the transferal process! That was my sole mission for the day, sir! I see. Sounds like a very uh, important mission. After the award ceremony finished that day, there were so many people running around that I relocated the Blue Badger to the evidence room! Oh, so that's when you went to the evidence room. Tell us, what did you see when you got there? In order to enter the evidence room, you need an ID card, am I correct? Precisely, sir! I have it right here around my neck! So then... your ID number should be listed in here, right? There it is! I found it! This is the one right here! Could you please read us the number? Yes, sir! It's 4989596! That's my number, sir! See, Goodman? Even Meekins, freaking Meekins, knows his ID number. I see. Hmm? But the number 4989596 is shown as being used twice. 
Please explain, witness. It's no real mystery, sir! The first time is when I relocated Blue Badger to the evidence room. And the second time is when I went to go get him after everything settled down. I see. So it was during that second time when? Yes, sir! That was when I spotted the man on the security screen! So you were attacked. Can you tell us exactly what happened to you? It was a knife, sir! A knife! Detective Goodman put a knife on you? What happened then? Well, with me charging it on him like that, he looked as surprised as I was! You aren't exactly the kind of person someone would want to run into. That's when I reacted, sir! I swung my arms like an octopus struggling to detain him! Somebody needs to make fan art of that. It's probably gonna have to be me. That's how I got the scabs on my hand! Maybe if it just kept you cool, your hand wouldn't be... When I saw the blood trick down my arm, I panicked! I grabbed the man by his collar! What exactly do you mean when you say you did it? I know I don't look the type, but I'm really into kung fu films, sir! The man let his guard down for just an instant, so I snatched his knife away from him! You took his knife? I spun him around and performed a disarming maneuver! I made sure to close my eyes like a man! I uh, see. He must have been desperate. The next thing I knew, his white coat was drenched in a sea of my blood, and then... Then the next thing I knew... Yes? He punched me right in my face, sir! Give the guy a fucking medal. About what time did you regain consciousness? No offense, sir, but how am I supposed to know that? I was unconscious! Uh... Right. According to the report from the officer that woke up the witness, it was about 5.30. He hit me right in the head, too! I woke up crying tears of pain! That's nice. I, I mean, it's nice that you covered, that is. When I came around, though, I made sure to finish my mission, sir! Your mission? Yes, sir! The Blue Badger, sir! I returned him to the entrance before things got out of hand! So the officers woke you up with your hand probably bleeding in a pool of blood, and they just let you move something to the outside where you could have run away. This is dumb! Well, we can all rest easy now. I believe we now have a fairly accurate picture of what happened. Yes, Your Honor. Only one thing remains unclear. Was the man this officer murdered really the victim? He's got a point. Um... Yes, Officer Meekins? With regard to that, sir! Take a look at this! It was sent to my cell! So the police officer who supposedly killed somebody had the hard evidence of a videotape sent to his cell where he technically could have cut it up, or otherwise stretched it out. <sighs> Why send the fucking evidence to the killer? Killer in quotation marks, by the way. Chief Gant delivered it to me this morning, sir. That explains everything. The chief? Delivered it? What is that? A videotape? Yes, sir! That's absolutely right, sir! A videotape, sir! It contains footage from the security camera in the evidence room! Objection. What? But I specifically asked if there was such a tape, and was told it had been mistakenly erased. That's quite a mistake. I just do what I'm told, sir! It's the only thing I'm really good at! Well, looks like communication with the police department is as good as ever. Well then, let's have a look. Show us the video of you murdering the victim. Oh my god, if they actually showed a snuff film in open here with the peanut gallery and all, 
the game would actually be cool so we know nobody didn't get killed. No! Oh, please stop using that word murder, sir! It scares me! A video of a real murder? Just what are we getting ourselves into? A huge pile of crap. Oh, is that music? By the way, if you pay attention to the blue badger, you'll see that it has jerky movements because... By... Default, his actual dance would reveal the guy's face. Also, as you can see, this is a shit camera angle. Also, only one camera, what the fucking hell. Well, I believe we're all thinking the same thing. How can we deal with these unsettling feelings stirred within us? What the hell was that wriggling piece of plywood? Best description of the Blue Badger ever! Sir! That is the pride and joy of the entire Criminal Affairs Department, sir! It's the Blue Badger, sir! Why am I not surprised this isn't going smoothly? Cause it's Meekins, and it's this fucking case. Yes, well, anyway. This tape seems to prove that the witness did indeed encounter... someone... in the evidence room and some sort of... Uh, activity did... Your Honor, instead of relying on clearly incomplete footage, the witness's testimony was a fist. Is that alright with you, Miss Officer Meekins? Well, it's not alright with me! I don't want that asshole to talk anymore. His face can't be clearly seen in the video, but there's no question that the other person was Detective Goodman, sir! I mean, he opened the locker, which required Detective Goodman's fingerprint to do! The locker he opened is unquestionably Detective Goodman's locker, sir! So it must be that no one else could have unlocked it! What's this about a fingerprint? Each detective has been given a locker equipped with a fingerprint-activated lock. These locks ensure that each locker can only be opened by the detective it belongs to. Intriguing, that would mean. The victim at the crime scene would have to have been Detective Goodman. Very well, the defense may begin its cross-examination. I don't know where this cross-examination will lead, but everything begins with contradictions. That's where I have to start. But you don't know that for sure, do you? You never actually saw Detective Goodman's face. Well, I suppose you might say that. That is, if you must live with people as having seen or not seen it. Since his face can't be identified in the video, only you can verify it. Well, why is everyone looking at me? If I had to label your stairs as disturbing! Beacons. Yay! Having been shown a questionable video at best, we are not in the best of moods. Understatement. Now please be more certain when you testify. Y yes sir! You claim the man who brandished the knife on you was Bruce Goodman. Tell us why you are positive it was him. About these lockers, is there no other way to open them? No sir, I myself tried all kinds of methods in the past! They only respond to registered fingerprints, sir! I wonder what sort of methods he's tried. If the man opened the locker's lock, which only responds to its registered fingerprints, then he must be the person the locker was assigned to. Technically, this makes sense, yes. Exactly my point, sir, and this too! How do you know that information? I've heard rumors, sir, from people in the know, sir! People in the know? The 
work as a department cafeteria, sir. They keep me informed. They also listen to my romantic troubles, sir. For the record, the open blocker did indeed belong to Detective Goodman. I verified this information through a more reliable source. So the victim opened the locker with his own fingerprint. However, the most important detail is not shown in this video. The man's face. Sir! If I may say something, sir! Please do. After all, you are the one being examined. I don't understand why the man's face is so important in this case, sir. I mean, it was his hand that opened the fingerprint lock. And it was his hand that tried to thrust his knife into my body, sir. My unsettled state can testify enough to this, sir. Yes, you have a point. The footage doesn't lie. That is, unless the defense can find a problem with it. I have so many fucking problems with it. Mr. Wright, let's check the court record again. Is there a problem with the security video? Yes, yes, there, there is quite a lot. Regarding the video contained on this f tape, there is one thing in particular that seems rather strange. Strange? This contradiction leads to the possibility that... The man may not be Detective Goodman. Wait, this video can take such a contradiction? Interesting. Your Honor, I have a proposal. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth. I propose we have the defense point out to us this alleged contradiction in the video. He would want me to point it out. What? Very well, proposal accepted. Let us further inspect this piece of evidence. I will now play the security tape. Mr. Wright, please show us this contradiction you speak of. I have to point out a problem in the video? This is the first time I've ever had to do that. <sighs> you can do it, Mr. Wright! It's set up so you can fast forward, rewind, or pause the video. Just take a good look and be sure to point out the right thing. Please don't play too many times. I can't stand watching this video. I can't stand watching it either. How did this guy ever become a police officer? Well, how did you become a lawyer? Now then, Mr. Wright, please enlighten us. Where is the contradiction that indicates the man may not be Detective Goodman? Oh, this fucking music. Here's something I want to point out with you. First time I played the case... And I read that other people had the same problem. People thought, or at least I, as well as some other people, thought that this was important. This glove falling out here, obviously, you know, was jammed in there, could be opened, no problem. What we actually have to point out, though... Uh, why does this music play the entire time? is from the very beginning the light meaning that it's open I think the glove would have been much better because then it could have skipped a testimony the thing that's strange about this video has got to be this officer Meekins sir do you mean me sir as I understand it the locker apparatus works like this When you grab the handle, a sensor reads a fingerprint. If the print matches the registered data, the light turns on and the lock is released. According to my very limited experience, that's the way I understand it, sir! If so, then something is seriously wrong with this picture. Why do we have to show the video? Are you really that much in love with the fact that you can show this video on the DS. Then again, Apollo Justice is worse in its third case. When the victim reaches for the handle to open the docker, let's rewind to a little earlier. Oh my god, Phoenix! We already pointed out the freaking light! And could you hurry up with the rewinding? Here, notice the light. With this, it's already lit. 
precisely my point, Your Honor. The locker was already open before the victim grabbed the handle. What's the meaning of this? It's very simple, Your Honor. The locker wasn't locked on the day of the crime. Question! These highly advanced high-tech lockers and all don't somehow tell you or have some sort of sensor being all guys I've been open for like over an hour you know maybe you know we should do something about that or I've been long open longer than 30 minutes this could be a problem are you not done yet you know like automatic lock feature after 10 minutes or so but the locker locks are controlled by an electronic system when the door is shut, a sensor is triggered, and the locker is automatically locked. Ooh, I know, it must have broken down. Of course, I'm not an expert in this. That's not likely, Your Honor. The sensor would detect and report any malfunction. <laughs> Give him the glove. I have my doubts. Oh well, it just goes to show novices should keep their mouths shut. So then, Mr. Wright, do you have an explanation? Me, Your Honor? Yes. Why wasn't the luck locked? Me, Your Honor? Yes. Well, you see, this isn't exactly my field. What do you think, Miss Scientific Investigator? Huh? Oh, um... Maybe something like jam the electronic system? Something jam the sensor? Hey. There's something else that seems out of place in this video. Yeah, I thought so too! There's got to be another clue somewhere in this village. Video footage, pick one. Let's expect video with Zboe. I hate you all. Please watch closely. This is the continuation of the part I showed earlier. <sighs> Stop showing so many freaking... Just show the freaking still that I presented! What's this? Something white fell out of the locker. But sir! It's been my experience that things fall out when doors are open. I often fall out in a great distance when I open my card. We can't be sure that item was in the locker to begin with. What do you mean? The sensor triggers the lock when the door is shut. What if something was inserted, say, between the sensor and the door? Like a condom. Inserted? Fuck the video. The video is so terrible that even my footage lags. This white thing wasn't inside the locker. It was stuck between the door and the sensor. Yes, these high-tech... advanced lockers... can somehow detect a dude, there's something stuck here I can't close properly. Faxes in the 80s and 90s were, could detect if something jammed them. But these fucking high-tech things can't? Yeah, this is a problem! Fuck the high-tech stuff! This is shit! This ca entire case is shit! I understand now, sir! It's just like my tie! Two out of three times I get stuck at the door when I get out of my patrol vehicle, sir! Instead of the door closing, my tie chokes me! But the object would have to be extremely thin to fit in the door. Not only that, it would also have to block electrical currents. It would need to be an insulator. Yes, an insulator, but at the crime scene... There just might have been something that fits the description. But sir! By insulator! You don't mean... I think I finally got this figured out. Very well. Will the defense please present the relevant evidence? What was this insulator that was stuck in the lock door? And really, this is the only case... The only important thing that this rubber glove is for, it actually doesn't have anything to do with SL9. It's only there for this. But we can't be sure that was in the victim's locker. It has a tag that says SL9. The video seems to depict the victim opening the locker. 
But that isn't the case. The lit lamp attests to this. On the day of the crime, even I could have opened that locker. Is this not so, Officer Meekins? Sir! It would appear so, sir! Kill yourself with that, please. So are we to believe then that the victim whom this witness stabbed in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman? Do not be misled, Your Honor. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? The defense has merely demonstrated that possibility and nothing more. The victim in the video was indeed Bruce Goodman. The prosecution will offer one more testimony to prove this. Fuck you, Edgeworth! Testimony proves shit. Officer Meekins. Please testify about this. Sir! Me, sir! I'm not sure what you're referring to, sir! Referring to one oh too many... Oh! You mean that, sir! Of course, sir! Is this a joke? Unfortunately not. Very well, begin your testimony. There's one other thing that proves that matter was Detective Goodman, sir! To enter the evidence room, one must use their ID card! When an ID card is used, there's a record of it! At the time of the crime, the detective had used this card! An ID card record, I see. I have the ID card record right here, Your Honor. The ID used at 514 is that of the victim. Just before the crime, hmm? Yes, without a doubt, this is the victim of the ID. Yes, it is! However, one thing does strike me as unusual. Several hundred cases should have been due for transferal. Why were there so few people using this room? This particular evidence room is only used for storing certain special cases. Special cases? Extremely violent cases involving police staff. Just hearing that makes my hair stand on end! Me too, although it doesn't make much of a difference. There were only a few cases up for transferal there, and most were cleared up by noon. And yet there's no record for the times people entered before noon? Right, I see. Now, let's just move on to the cross-examination. Ah, why do I have to? Is a card hanging from your neck one of these ID cards? Yes, sir! This card right next to my cuffs, sir! I keep it here so I won't ever forget it! But what if someone were to steal it from you, keeping it out in the open like that? Maybe I should wear it around my neck! Remember when I said two out of three times my tie gets stuck in my car door when I get out? Well, the remaining time my ID card gets stuck. Just wear it around your neck, underneath your jacket. Then it's, you know, you won't forget it, and it's not so I'll know, and it can't get stuck. Instead of the door closing, my tea card chokes me! Maybe I should just leave this one alone. At any rate, each police officer has only one ID card. Both the police department and the prosecutor's office can attest to this. Oops. Yes, I'm thinking of Edgeworth when something happened. Earlier, I believe he testified that when you asked the man to show his ID card, he pulled a knife on you. Yes, sir! He didn't show me any ID card, sir! Don't you think that's odd? I mean, if he had his ID card, all he had to do was show it to you. There wouldn't be any reason to draw a knife. Maybe he just panicked! Everything stems from contradictions. Let's point them out. Mr. Wright, what do you think? I'm confused. What? The problem with this ID card testimony is far too obvious. It's not like Edward to miss something like this. You're thinking too hard about it. Come on, let's show them what we've got! 
Yeah. Wait a moment, the officer beacons. No, I'm not good at waiting, sir. I have the victim's ID card right here. I found it at the crime scene. That makes sense. When I say crime scene, I'm not referring to the evidence room at the police department. I mean the other crime scene. The underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. Your Honor, I have one more piece of evidence to present. It's a very important clue regarding the victim's ID card. A last item report? It's only half completed. But it shows that Detective Goodman had lost something on the day of the crime. Something important enough to fill out this report. Let me guess. You believe this something to be his ID card, right? I can't say for sure, but there is a high probability. On the day of the crime, Detective Goodman was not carrying his card. So now, what does this all mean? It can only mean one thing. It doesn't require much thought. The man Officer Meekins encountered in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman, but rather the man who stole his ID card. Does the prosecution have a response? I have only one thing to say to the defense. Bravo, Mr. Wright. Bravo? Allow me to summarize the defense's argument. At 5.50 p.m. on the day of the crime, the man Officer Meekins encountered in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman. There are two grounds to support this. The locker in the evidence room was already unlocked. The victim lost his ID card. Am I correct so far, Mr. Wright? Yes. What's he up to? That being the case, we must inevitably arrive at a single conclusion. If the victim in this video is a fake, then the murder in the evidence room is also fake. In other words, the security camera does not show the instance of the murder. I... that's... well, I guess that's right. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Only moments ago you seemed content to be pointing your finger around. This isn't good. Well, well. It seems you finally realized. Exactly what you've got to such lengths to prove. Explain yourself, Mr. Edgeworth. The defense has already done the, explana the explaining for me. But the victim in this video is a fake, which means a murder did not take place. At the police department at 5.15 on the day of the crime. You guys need to learn when you can probably stop a sentence without having it sound weird when you continue it in the next text box. Box. So, so the real crime could only take place at one location. The underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. The murderer being Miss Lana Sky, the defendant. The evidence is compelling. A trustworthy witness. Observe the moment the defendant used the word murder weapon. Yeah, you kinda ran into that. I knew that testimony was way too shabby. It was all a trap from the beginning. The activity in the evidence room still leaves many questions unanswered. Who exactly was the victim Mr. Beacons encountered? And where did this person disappear to? However, this trial's purpose is to examine only the murder of Detective Goodman. Just so, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, you have to do something, or else Lana! What do I do? How am I supposed to get myself out of this mess? Um, yeah. Objection. One moment, Your Honor. What now, Mr. Wright? You're not the honor. Well, of course you're the honor. You're the honor of our all hearts. Don't tell me you're objecting to what you've just proven. Of course not. But I almost walked right out of the prosecution's trap. What are you talking about? 
This cross-examination has proven one thing and one thing only. The security video did not show the actual murder. Why are you still showing this part? However, it cannot be said that it is unrelated to the murder in the parking lot. Why the fuck that? Specifically, large amounts of blood traces were found in the evidence room. The defense demands further examination into the truth of the matter. Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. If this court were to examine this further, other witnesses will be necessary. Is the prosecution prepared? I'm sorry, Your Honor. The prosecution considered the incident at the police department to be unrelated. We have not prepared any other witnesses for this incident. This just might be my chance. Time to call a certain Texas Ranger to the stand. Don't humor him with this stupid Texas crap. Mr. Wright, do you mean... Your Honor, the defense would like to request a specific witness. Oh? Whom do you have in mind? Someone we have reason to believe knows the truth. The truth behind the activities that took place in the evidence room. The prosecution requests to hear this person's name before deciding whether or not to comply. Very well then, Mr. Wright. This person whom you would have testify, what is his or her name? Let's call him Lana. Officer Jake Marshall. Why him? I can't let him know everything just yet. He's in charge of the evidence room. I feel we should hear what he has to say. The prosecution agrees to the defense's request. Since he was responsible for guarding the room, we should hear his testimony. Fortunately, he works in the police department. We shouldn't need longer than 20 minutes to prepare. Very well. The court would take a 30-minute recess while the witness is subpoenaed. Will the prosecution please prepare the witness during this time? We will, Your Honor. Court in recess. There's no stopping you, is there, Mr. Wright? Hmm? What do you mean? You called for Jake Marshall. It seems you've figured everything out. Uh, I haven't figured out anything. Lana! You're the one who knows everything! Emma... You always know everything! Why don't you just tell us? Because of a very, very stupid reason. Mr. Wright is trying his hardest to protect you! I... I don't recall ever asking for his protection. How can you be so cold? Don't you trust us? Don't you trust me? Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. Oh, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You've got a lot of nerve, pal, making the detective run around, around while I'm duty and to top off and call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. Sorry, detective. You better be, pal. Hey. Hey! 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 I didn't see you there, Miss Guy. That's okay. Have you brought what I asked? Oh. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you mean this, right? My apologies, Detective. Due to my present circumstances, I was forced to use Mr. Wright's name when making my request. My name? Never in a million years would I have thought it was you who asked me. Could I bother you to bring me the SL9 incident files? I'll need them by noon. Talk about crazy. The SL9 incident? But Lana, that's... I thought Mr. Wright might need them, so I had them brought here. Here. You might do well to read them. <laughs> like Phoenix would ever be able to read all that crap in 30 minutes. 
or all of it at all. Come on, he can't even read the books of his own freaking job at home. What makes you think he would read that? I can't believe you were the chief prosecutor were witness in that case. This guy was a witness? Take it from me, you don't want anything to do with serial murders. What? Now that I've brought you yourself, you're just gonna ignore me? Actually, yeah, sure, let's let's look at it. File for the dark killings, what now? Criminal Joe Dark, serial murder, death. Kirby. Hey, Neil Marshall. Wait, isn't Rachel Moss? No. I was thinking that was the English dub name of Ran in Detective Conan, but it's Rachel Moore. Mm hmm. Well, that was very little information from that huge pile. Emma, but what? Why is your name in here? What? My name's in there? I don't know, unless... It couldn't be Lana, the SL9 incident, is, is that? That's the classification number the police filed it under. Two years ago, the rest of the world knew it as... The Joe Tark killings. Joe... No, Lana! That's over with! No! Emma! She ran away. Uh, you know what? I just remembered I gotta be somewhere. Sorry, pal, but I'm out of here. Jake, Marshall, Angel, Star, Damon, Gant, Miles, Edgeworth. Not to mention Lana and Emma. Everyone involved in this case connected to those killings two years ago. Which makes it especially dumb that Emma didn't realize that... I mean, these are people she knew from this case. And everybody c keeps talking about SL9 and two years ago, and we all worked on it, and she never figured out SL9 equals Joe Dark? How come you didn't figure that out? It's really not that difficult with a little logic, you scientific investigator. Stupid girl. This can't be just a coincidence. Knowing you, you just might be able to figure it out. Time to get back to the trial, Mr. Wright. Best of luck. Better take a good look at this file. I already did. <laughs>